Hi, this is John from The Ring Lord. I am demonstrating our jewelry welder. It's a pulse arc welder, which is a has a tungsten electrode, and when you push the foot switch, makes a really fast weld. First thing I will demonstrate is how to use the welder to finish the tip of ear wires to make a nice rounded end that goes through sensitive ears without, without damage. And you just line it up, basically point toward the point. In this case, I'm about a half millimeter or so from the edge of the electrode. And then I close my eyes and hit the foot switch. And we have a nice, perfect hemisphere on the end. And we'll, we'll have uh, close-up pictures on the, on the website for you to look at. Now, let's look at the welder a little bit here. We have an on-off switch, fairly self-explanatory coarse tune and a micro tune, and these are 10 turn potentiometers, and they show the, show the number there, so go 5, 6, of course the higher the number, the more the weld power, and as a general rule I'm just starting at 5.5, five, trying a weld, and then just adjusting as I, as I see fit for that particular wire size. So I think I'm you know, doing a 20 gauge stainless steel, and I'm thinking a 5.5 five is going to be just about right. Of course, good closures are absolutely essential. You get a bad closure and you'll just get two balled up ends rather than a weld. Typically, I'm resting either the ring or the plier against this ceramic electrode, never touching the electrode with, with the wire or with the ring that you're welding. That will just cause the ring to stick to the electrode. And welding. And a good weld, in this case, it's penetrating, it's penetrating from one side to the other, so the weld penetration is about 75% of the way through the wire. I could turn it up and go for 100%. In this case, it's so much stronger, even if you only get like a 10% like weld penetration, it's still so much stronger than a buttered ring that it's quite often not, like unless you're Unless you're making something that absolutely needs to be as strong as possible, any any weld is ten times stronger than, than, than no weld at all. And, and just as a quick test to see, like typically here, if I just show you a, a buttered ring as a as a comparison, if I had butted chain. And I just sort of grab the chain and pull. So let's grab it a little bit more firmly and pull. In that case, it took, I don't know, maybe 10, 20 pounds worth of force to pull it apart. But this welded chain, I'll get a really good grip. I am well, pulling about as hard as I can. And absolutely nothing. Oh, I do get a little bit of warping on this ring from grabbing it, grabbing it so tightly. But a good way to test a ring is take a plier, sort of grind some notches in it such that it doesn't come flying off the end, and you can sort of push on your plier, and what you'll find on a good weld is, here you can see, we, we, we warped the ring, and the weld didn't break, and that's generally what you're, what you're looking for is proof that you did a good weld. Again, in most cases, even if it breaks up the weld, it was still 10 times stronger than if you didn't weld it. I'm just going to demonstrate some slightly thicker wire. In this case, we have 18 gauge, again, stainless steel. Now, what you'll find as you go with thicker wire, this is still at the 5.5 setting. And in this case, I had a very nice weld. And if I look carefully, I've got about maybe 30% weld penetration. So I can turn it up, and I will just demonstrate that. Now if you turn it up too much, basically you'll start to just sort of blow out the weld. In this case, we'll turn it right up to, right up to 10, and weld the other side. And I'll now let's grab a new ring so I can more easily compare. Uh, surprisingly little difference. What I quite often have found on these welders is, despite one being called coarse turn, 
coarse tune and one being called micro tune. They really sort of are more or less equal. And I find that just, just think of it as adding the two numbers seems to be more accurate than one having more effect than the other. So this is at full power. Definitely more of a, of a more of an intense weld in that, in that time. I would say that on an 18 gauge ring at full power, we're getting about 50% weld penetration. So that means that if I take this ring and weld it once on one side, flip it around, weld it again on the other side, we now have pretty much fully welded ring, which should be incredibly strong. When you start going above 18 gauge to get the strength, it'll take more and more welds. For example, with this 16 gauge, I weld it once. In this case, I'm welding, I'm trying to weld at the top. We've got eh, maybe 20% or so penetration. Now this is this is fine. This is many times stronger than, than a buttered ring. You could easily stop here. You want to keep going. Basically, you can weld it on the inside just by, by putting your ring like this. You can twist and you can weld it on this side. And just a spot here. So basically you can go all the way around doing as many welds as it takes and then you will get as strong of a ring as you will as you will ever need. Uh, about the, the maximum that you can do with this welder is about in, in one weld is about 20 gauge. On the other hand, on the low end, you can go down to 30 or 40 gauge wire. You start I'll just do a real quick demonstration on 24 gauge. We can turn her down. Go on with about a, let's go with about a two. And like I said, I sort of generally move these together. And I, overall, I think one 10 churn adjustment would have been plenty of adjustment for this welder. Okay, so this ring will probably be lucky if you can see this ring on the on the video. 24 gauge 1 16th. Make sure I get a good closure. And yeah, I may not have a good enough closure. And I'd say no, I did not have a good enough closure. Let's try that again. And in the case you know you don't have a good enough closure when you weld right in the middle of the like right between the the two uh, the two wires on the ring and your ends just sort of ball up rather than flow together. I'm going to go a little bit more power. That could also have been the problem. Let's say three or so. And you can see when you're, when you're welding 24 gauge at, at sort of 30 or 40 percent power, there we go, you've got, and yeah, no chance that you can really see that ring, but we have a successfully welded 24 gauge ring we can easily go down to 26, 28, 30 gauge. This welder can still quite easily handle it. Cut.